And for those of you who have not seen my other videos where I've used it, today we're using the mighty ESAB or ESAB, or if you want to say it, uh, plasma cutter. Uh, this is the uh, PCM875. This is a 60 amp uh, plasma cutter, and uh, it, uh, it's, it, it does a heck of a job. In the words of Ferris Bueller, if you have the means, I highly recommend getting one. <laughs> Anyways, all right, so I've got it. I just powered the unit up, and first thing I gotta do is put on my air. Uh, what did I do here? Did I turn it on? Oh, I can hear the boiler down there in the cellar from the open bulkhead, and I thought that was this thing running. I hadn't turned this on yet. There we go. So, power it up. And we air test. And I'm looking for about 70 PSI, and that's right at about 75. But when you uh, when you stop, it actually will come back up to uh, a higher level. Now, why isn't that fault? What's going on here? Eh, something's wrong. Oops, I had inadvertently hit the trigger lock to the unlock position. What that does is when it's in the unlock position, when you press the button, it starts, and when you release the button, it just stays running. So uh, that is what the deal is with that button right there. So if you put it in the lock position, it basically, when you press the button, it'll uh, turn on, and then when you release the button, it'll shut off. The reason why you still hear the air flowing is because it's a post flow the air okay so that's the deal there okay so we are ready to go well almost I need to put my safety gear on I need to get my helmet out uh, yeah I you probably seen some of these guys that are just uh, you know they're real cool and everything and they're using their sunglasses when they're plasma cutting uh, not this guy I uh, <laughs> I want my helmet on for a face shield for one thing and then also I just uh, I use a lighter shade, but I like to use the helmet for this kind of a process. Now the obligatory few words on safety. I mean, you hear everybody talk about safety when you're showing how to do something. Um, I am by no means an expert on the subject, but uh, you know, some, some guys are going to look at this video and think it's overkill for plasma cutting, what I wear. Some guys might think, hey, you really should be wearing X, Y, or Z, and if you want, leave comments for that. I'm always willing to uh, pick up tips and try and implement them when I can, when it's economically feasible, especially. Uh, so what I like to do is um, uh, auto darkening helmet. This is a 3M speed glass. Love this helmet. Very, uh, very good investment. Uh, especially, I mean, if you're a beginner, there's nothing that can beat an auto darkening helmet, even if you have to settle for a cheaper one. This is a pretty high end helmet. In a larger viewing area, which uh, that's one of the pluses when you get a, into the more expensive helmets. A leather apron, okay. This is what I wear when I stick weld, and this is what I wear when I plasma cut. Um, a weldy shirt, buttoned all the way up to the neck so you don't get flashed. That's where you get the equivalent of the worst sunburn you've ever had in your life. Never experienced it heard people talk about it, that's why I button all the way up. Try and keep that all covered up. That's why it's long sleeve. That of course you don't want this spattering on your burn. You see some old veteran guys that got burns all over scarring all over their forearms, don't want that. Leather gloves, welding gloves. The new edition, this was in the uh, this was in the uh, Wells Index Horde, what I call those videos that there was a welding cap in there. So ran it through the wash. Now we got one. So that goes on like this, and anything that sparks and flies up and wants to come down on the old bald noggin of mine won't leave nasty little scarred burns there. So, uh, so that's going to shut the camera off while I suit up. Well, in the words of Jody from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com, let's churn and burn.
I think that's what he says. I don't know. I think I've heard him say it in one of his videos. Check out his website and his uh, videos on YouTube. A lot of good information on there. Uh, that being said, let's go to work. I didn't really uh, clean off when my ground clamp is. We'll, uh, we'll see how that is because the bushing on the inside seems like it's a pretty good grounding surface. Um, we'll see how it acts. If the plasma cutter is acting up, then I'll know I probably get a bad ground and we'll uh, grind a spot. Speed square. Get to stop every once in a while with the brush fires like that one. Probably had a hose ready. Now that little fire spread pretty quick and fast, so that's why it's always a good idea to kind of keep checking around and see what's going on. You know, in this particular case, I had the water ready because I expected I was going to have an issue. But, you know, if I hadn't had my hose set up ahead of time and everything, I was put a, you know, well, this hose is stuck down here. Oh, it's a lot of pages. Oh. Yeah. This is going to go a little trickier. Look at this, use this as a guide. by the sound whether or not I'm, I'm uh, doing what I want to do, which is I want to make sure I'm punching all the way through so that all the spark and everything is going inside, it won't happen inside here. That's, that's limiting my possibility of sparking off more fires here. And also just want to get a cleaner cut. If uh, the noise changes significantly and I start to see the uh, slag sputtering back out, it means I've got my angle too steep or wrong and so it's having trouble getting full penetration. Uh, I'm set at uh, 50 amps, by the way, which is plenty, uh, plenty for this, uh, this particular job. The other reason I want to take a break every once in a while is because I do have an undersized uh, conductor in the extension cord that I'm running this off of. So, just in case any conductors or any connections are heating up, to give them a chance to cool down.
I'm noticing when I'm taking my finger off the butt, darn thing staying, staying on until I pull back and extinguish the R. I think I got that button. I think I had that switch in one position after all. I just switched it to unlock. We'll see how that works. That was it. <laughs> I got an unlock. As soon as I take my button off, the VR stops. That's what I wanted. That ought to do it. Time to get the loader. Turn her around. Let's see if I can't do this without the loader. Definitely shifted position on me, so I have a feeling that it's uh, broke free. Hook the loader up, lift from this end, and the weight of this is probably going to make this snap off. That sucker is <laughs> on there a lot better than I thought. 